Hello and welcome. Let's have a first look what we are going to explore in this tutorial video. In these areas, when you look at the top viewport, we can see a camera path, a camera moving around and we see objects popping in and out of existence. We are going in this video to explore a new node and functionality we have added to Thinking Particle 7.1. And this node is Position to Camera. It's a very powerful node that allows us to procedurally do all kinds of level of detail effects. Very efficient and simple and automatic. But first let's have a look at the scene we are using here. So what we have here, let me just make this a little bit bigger. So what we have is the camera path where the camera moves along and then we have some cylinders placed around in the scene. So pretty simple straightforward setup. And the uh, thinking particle setup is also very straightforward and simple. We have our object to particle where we bring in all our cylinders in one go. We'll make sure that we have instance shape turned on so that we get the triangles and everything as well. So this is one important thing and we store it in the particles group. Now that we have all the objects inside of thinking particles, we can manipulate them and do whatever we wish to them. So let's have a closer look what's uh, happening in that scene here. So as I mentioned before, the camera moves along the path and wherever the camera looks at, so we have this field of view in the camera, we can see that objects pop into existence and whenever the camera looks away, objects that are invisible to the camera are also removed from the scene. So this is a very powerful uh, feature because now we only have objects in front of our camera view and not behind. So whenever the camera uh, points away, it removes all the objects. And when they come uh, into the camera view, we activate the objects. So that's the basic idea of uh, controlling a level of detail, for example, that's dependent on the camera view. And it's a very powerful feature to save memory and optimize your rendering. Let me just go back to the camera view because there's more going on. We do not only have uh, the objects popping in and out, we also have high resolution and low resolution objects. So we have simple boxes in the distance and we have high resolution cylinders uh, near to the camera. And as soon as we enter a threshold, getting close to the camera, we use automatically the high resolution object. Also, this is done fully procedural and automatic. So whenever the camera is close to an object, we use and pick the high resolution. When it's far away, we just use the low resolution object. Keep in mind, we could swap out objects as we do here, or we could just modify existing objects and increase the uh, subdivision or whatever you want to have as a high resolution object. Let's have a look now how we achieve this effect. Here's the setup. Really simple. This new node, Position to Camera, is a very powerful yet simple node that allows us to pick any camera in the max viewport and use the exact camera data including the screen coordinates of the camera and we can have the inside screen and outside screen as a boolean flag. So that will tell us if we see an object inside of our camera view or if we don't see it. So whenever we see an object, don't see an object, let's start with that first, we scale it down to zero. And there's a new feature in 7.1 where zero scale objects are actually zero scale and generate no triangles at all. So that's effectively removing the object from memory. So we will not transfer this to the renderer or do anything with the object. Then if we see the object with inside of the screen, then we go to our standard scale and we turn on the object again. And now we have this switch between everything outside of the camera view is turned off, scaled down, and inside the camera view is scaled up. Then we have the screen coordinates where we just use the Z value, the depth or distance to the camera screen or camera plane, 
and we use a simple value to value that will select between object zero and object one. So value to value spits out zero or one based on our distance we have to the object. So let me just move that over here a little bit and have a look at value to value. So we have a distance of 200 right now. If I were to increase this distance, you can see instantly we can now look farther and uh, we use a high resolution uh, at a 300 distance. Now let me turn this back to 200 and we are just objects that are really close to the camera will have the high resolution object. So that's the switching between what we have here in the value to value between those two objects with the Geom instance. So very powerful node, simple as I mentioned, but powerful. And this gives us fully procedural access to the camera data and we can do whatever we want. We can swap out objects, we can scale them down, scale them up. We can change the color of objects. We can uh, change the subdivision of objects, whatever we want. And it's so simple and easy to set up and very fast and powerful. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Check out our other tutorial videos as well. Thank you for watching this video. Goodbye.